So we talked a bit about why people are quite so fearful of the concept of mirror life. That is, an organism that had all of the same structures as we did, except they were completely reversed. That fear that our immune systems would not be able to detect them if they ever got out into the world, they would end it. Which is, you know, possible. One of the questions I would have is, why are these structures not used right now? I mean, we have our standard A, T, C, and G, and it's pretty consistent across all organisms, isn't it? Well, there's a myriad of other structures that we could have. In our genomes, we call these non-canonical nucleotides. Yes, there are more. And we use some of them in our proteins, and we have the genes to make them. When you use them in places that they shouldn't be, they can be associated with cancers and other neurodegenerative conditions. They are also found in viruses. Viruses have no rules. They have other kinds of DNA, other kinds of RNA, double-stranded RNA. They don't care. So some researchers decided to put them in bacteria and see what would happen. As it would turn out, non-canonical nucleotides can code for amino acids, even non-canonical amino acids. There's a whole lot more than the 20 we use. Yeah, it gets, it gets real weird. Bacteria lack the repair system in order to actually maintain those nucleotides. They end up with damage to their genome. Essentially, their proteins can only interact with what they are used to. You'd have to come up with a whole new protein to deal with the non-canonical versions of these things. Viruses don't really care. They don't really have to maintain their genomes, and if they do, they just use the endogenous systems in the organisms they infect. If you're the kind of virus who wants to put your genome in something else and you have non-canonical stuff on there, you're going to have a higher mutation rate, and that's okay. Viruses can make a near infinite number of themselves, and if something doesn't work out, they didn't really invest that much energy into it, or any energy at all, because they rely on their host to do so. So back to the origins of life on an early Earth. Researchers who have synthesized the biological molecules of early Earth have found that they don't just turn out to be the standard ones. They get non-canonical nucleotides, non-canonical amino acids, and a bunch of other organic structures that, well, we're not entirely sure how they were used. There's a bunch of junk in there. But we only use some of it. The likely answer is that this just became the dominant structures. Over millions of years of evolution, billions of years of evolution, in fact, these just worked better with the environment that we have. Viruses are constantly putting their genomes inside the bacteria. If they were beneficial, the bacteria would have kept them. We kept many viral components. There's over 200 in our genomes that we share with chimpanzees, one of which is a gene that we got from an endogenous retrovirus that gave us efficient myelination. This separates mammals from other organisms and allows us to move as well as we move. Think of virus. At the end of the day, we don't know exactly why these things came to pass, but scientists are working on finding possible answers. As much as we hate them, they are little friends, and they helped us become what we are. Also, I would not be that concerned about mirror life. Just the way it is. Are you